Who boy, ladies and gentlemen, I do love me a good story. And this story today involves AI, conspiracy, and maybe a bit of nudity. We'll see at the end. But this is a story that kind of triggers on the dangerous side because of it preying mainly on people's paranoia and is completely false due to the lack of evidence it holds. And what story could that be? But how about the story of four military grade AI units killing 29 in a lab in Japan? Yeah, this story gets wild and fast. I'm pretty sure if this actually happened, we'd all be on grand alert right now and burning chat GBT to the ground. But the story goes as follows that in a lab in Japan, they were creating military AI that were supposed to replicate soldiers in a way. And I don't know what story went down because they don't specify because this story lacks any sort of credibility or facts. But they state that the AIs just went rogue and began killing people. Scientists then fought back against these things, killing two with standard handguns, dismantling the third one, and shutting down the fourth one, only for the fourth one to pull an absolute Giga Chad self-revive move and connect it to an orbiting satellite nearby to reboot itself. And it came back even stronger. How? Th this story is wild. And I started looking around wondering where this information was coming from and more specifically who was spreading it. And that's where this lady comes into play. And through my research, this led me to this woman, which is Miss Linda Moulton Howe, or Mrs. because she is married. Uh, she's not a very well-known person. She's a award-winning journalist, apparently, and she's mainly known for being on Ancient Aliens of all things. But if you check out her Rotten Tomatoes page, a lot of the things she's in, mainly movies, aren't well received. The Observer getting a 20%, and uh, Mirage Men getting 39%. But Ancient Aliens, baby, woo, up there with 94%. What, the secret of Skinwalker Ranch only got sick? That's a crime. Unknown character. <laughs> she's not even credited. Oh, that's hilarious. But following Linda down this rabbit hole led me to this video of her that's supposed to apparently take place in August of 2017. And well, it reveals a lot and I feel me reading it, the transcript won't do it any justice until Linda explains herself. At a top robotics company in Japan this week, four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. I didn't know there was any other kind. The scariest part is that lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third. But the fourth robot began restoring itself and somehow connected to an orbiting satellite to download information about how to rebuild itself even more strongly than before. And this, this next sentence, is a, this is a quote. I'm, I'm writing this down. I've been doing this for years. This is serious shit, Linda. But you're never going to hear about this. In yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. And I wouldn't be surprised if Linda also admitted to doing a couple lines of cocaine before coming out here and telling us why she should be class president. But an astute eye would see that in the subtext, it says in August of 2017, whistleblower Linda would come forth with this information of how AIs went on a kill streak so close of getting the tactical nuke they desired. But it says down below that the main article itself was published December 15th, 2018. Hey, isn't that just before the pandemic started? Kind of convenient, don't you think? No, I think it's honestly someone just trying to forge a headline of some sort of newspaper or article online just so they could try and make this more authentic than it actually is. Now, weirdly, the video does cut out a bit. It does even leave out some information, but thankfully the people at Fact Crescendo have given me a basic rough transcription of what happened between Linda and this so-called informant she has. The transcript starts off with Linda stating on Saturday, October 26, 2017, not very long ago from these events happening, I received a phone call from a whistleblower in the intel world I've known for about a year and a half. He is an honorably discharged marine, but he continues to work on contracts with the CIA, NSA, and DIA agencies. So now we have a new character in this manga arc, this honorably discharged marine that we can't put a name or face to. 
I always keep notebooks all over my house, my office, my car, and everywhere so I can write down a phone call that I can't record or I'm not in the studio to record. Honestly, if this topics are as sensitive as this, I mean, huge Japanese AI corporations having death machines that are killing people in the double digits, you'd think maybe they would, you know, have some repercussions for recording phone calls or leaking info like this. So I wrote this down almost word for word. And now this is the informant talking. At a top robotics company in Japan this week, four robots being developed for military applications killed 29 humans in the lab. And they did it by shooting what he called metal bullets. I didn't know there were any other kinds. That's what Linda said. The scariest part is that the lab workers deactivated two of the robots, took apart the third one, but the fourth one began restoring itself and somehow connecting to an orbiting satellite to download information and how it could rebuild itself even stronger than before. Apparently these things are just terminators at this point, where we might as well just face it. This is Skynet, we lost, we lost. Go give them Sarah Connor. And the next quote is, I'm writing this down. I've been doing this for years. I've always write it down. This is serious shit, Linda, but you're not going to hear about this in the news. The robotics company has too much to lose and the government wants AI robot soldiers. Close quote. And unfortunately, this is where our story ends. The rabbit hole goes no deeper than Linda and her mysterious informant that's an honorably discharged Marine that works with the government that constantly leaks information to her and apparently brought forth this story of four AIs going rogue and killing people only to be shut down, bringing to light that Japan's working on military AI soldiers. Honestly, if you think about it, this whole story is just one giant Ouroboros cycle. You start at point A with the rogue AI soldiers, and you'll just go around in this constant circle cycle of eating the same facts, eating the same cereal and copium that everyone that tries to make this story real has. But at the end of the day, you and I know this story is a crock of crap. But hey, that's not a fun way to end a video, so let's suspend disbelief and think about this as though the story was actually real, shall we? Let's say that there actually were four AI military units that went rogue and killed 29 people in a Japanese military lab. A. How would we hear about it? This seems something so hush-hush top-secret black site that anyone who does know about it would be sent to good old Guantanamo, or even have a six-foot grave somewhere in the Mojave. And that would include Linda herself. She knows too much. You see, we live in an age of data where every little thing, every little secret you can have is a score point for your country. But for some reason, this is, it was an exception. Linda telling this was an exception. I get you could always make the point of, oh, they'll probably never believe her. They'll probably think she's so crazy and whatnot. And while well, you're right. The government could simply just write her off as some sort of lunatic that has no actual credibility to her sources or anything she says. Honestly, it's a more valuable tool than actually killing your opponent, letting them live by everyone else thinking they're crazy. In all honesty, the scariest thing about this story wasn't the supposed four AI units that went rogue and killed people, it was the amount of misinformation that I saw while researching this. There were so many people from Instagram to TikTok to Facebook to Twitter to even here on YouTube that tried to pass this story off as though it was true as the gospel itself. It was ridiculous. It was amazing how quickly people would shift into spreading misinformation if it meant telling an interesting story for the sake of clout, likes, updutes, follows, and shares. It was honestly scarier than the story itself. How quickly we fall into spreading misinformation for the smallest things such as internet attention and points. It's honestly baffling that in an age of misinformation we have people so willingly to surrender to it. In reality, the only way to protect yourself against misinformation is by using good old common sense. By fact checking yourself against multiple sources and to try and call these people out when they're you know, selling you snake oil. But that's enough preaching. Have a great weekend, everybody.